I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is how I painted Earth Magic Tree. A beautiful picture of a tree that I was familiar with from years ago had come into my life recently. And when I saw how this turned out for the preparation, I was ready to give it a shot. You'll see how I painted this tree using different media. And I hope you'll like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I started out with a day working with acrylic inks and some pre-existing paintings that I had, as well as some fresh paper. This painting had been set up with powdered graphite and water. It didn't go anywhere for me, so I set it aside and I decided to develop it as a tree. Can you see the tree form in there? Because I sort of could. I started out by putting wax all around the edges so the inks and water would not run off the paper when they got very wet. Next, I had the idea to work with some pebbles that I knew were in my shed. I went and got a little container and put some of the pebbles in there, washed them off, and had them all set just to drop onto the wet paint. My plan was to drop them onto the wet paint and then put some heavy weight on top. When the paint dried, I would then take them off and see what kind of print they made. It was an experiment. Then I got out all my materials. I chose the colors that I wanted. And this was from a box of acrylic inks that I have. I used several different kinds of products, but I just got out the paint that I thought would be nice look good together and maybe do some harmonious blending. I have my water, my pebbles, and some plastic wrap all prepared, as well as my surfaces that I was going to paint on. Here's how my setup looks. I have two pieces of clean paper all set with tape and no buckling, hopefully. And then I have my one piece that had been printed before with the powdered graphite washed off with water. Of course, it was now totally dry, and I was set to go. I squirted the paper down with my mister, my water bottle, and this is a close-up to show you how the water will not cross over the tape where I put that heavy layer of wax from the candle that you saw earlier. All the tape was covered right along the edge with that wax. And it really does contain all the mess to the paper because I don't want to put down a lot of paint and pigment and then have it run all over the table and not stay on the paper. I want it to be on the paper in color with its pigment. After I wet it down, I dropped in the color, sometimes using a brush from the container and sometimes using the eyedropper that is in many of these bottles of acrylic inks. When these inks are diluted heavily with water, they become transparent and act just like watercolor. Difference is, when they dry, they generally don't fade out like watercolor does. And since they're very, very concentrated, the colors retain their brilliance, even when you dilute them with water. So I put a mixture of colors down and I left it white where I wanted it to stay white. And then I dropped on my pebbles. I decided to drop them in a sort of an arch over where I thought the canopy of the tree would actually be in my imagination. I was also looking at a reference photo from a local photographer who did a very nice job of capturing this tree many years ago that was growing nearby. It's a beautiful old tree. I believe the man's name is John Hendricks, and I thank him for use of this photo. Next, I laid my plastic wrap onto the wet pigment. I tried to pull in some ground along the bottom with some folds, and then pull in the trunk of a tree by how I arranged the plastic wrap and squinched it around. At the same time, you couldn't do a whole lot of moving because those rocks were on there. After I got this formation all formed, 
I then covered the rest of the wet paper with more plastic wrap. And my last step after covering the whole paper with plastic wrap was to get two heavy art books from my shelf and put them on top of everything to put some weight on it. And now it's dry. I remove the books. I bring the set up into my video camera and I take off the plastic wrap. Next, I take off the rocks. Some of the rocks didn't want to come off very easily. What happened was that the acrylic paint, even though it was very thinned out with water, wanted to grab some of the rocks. So I continued to work at getting them off. My next step was to get out my ink pen and some white acrylic ink. I wanted to show magic dots floating all over the place. And at this point I am sort of painting by instinct. I have a photograph as mentioned of this beautiful tree that had been cut down years ago. I'm looking at the tree, I'm imagining what the roots would look like under the ground, and I'm using my white ink. I'm tracing over where I can see the roots might go. I'm also using the print lines that the plastic wrap formed on the paper because that feels very organic and very natural. And so I work with these roots and these root forms and then these little dots where the rocks left a little mark in the ink for the canopy area. I wasn't really exactly sure what I was doing. This is an imagination piece and I call it art play because I am playing. I don't know exactly how I'm going to go about this. I sort of follow what feels right and I guess you would call it instinctive painting. Forming out the tree with my ink pen. And then I put away the ink and I get out some sketching color and now I'm sketching with my brush. When I say sketching, I did not really do a pencil drawing. I am just drawing in where I think it should go. Following the forms of the branches. Also following where the, the plastic wrap printed onto the paper. Again, it feels more natural if you can do that and use what's actually already there. I'm putting down some golden ochre, yellow ochre on the left. And for the right side, I'm using mainly indigo mixed with some gray. Where I want the paint to be darker still, I'm mixing in some violet. This tree had a number of very confusing branches. So I did deviate from the photograph that I was looking at. I had to work with what was logically going to work for my painting as opposed to what was actually there in reality. And so it went, I built the ground, I built the roots on the darkest colors the white ink showed up the best. And on the lighter colors, of course, the darker paint showed up the best. Another thing that happened was as I worked, 
the paper, which had been washed over heavily twice with water, lost some of its sizing and became more porous, so it absorbed the white ink more readily. I had to go back and lay more layers of white ink wherever I wanted it to show brighter. So you'll see me going back and doing that a number of times in this painting where I wanted the white ink to show as very white. As I move further up the tree, I'm changing the colors of the branches in some cases using more of the yellow ochre coloring to show where light might be shining on the tree. This is a painting about magic. So my light and my dark and all the ways that the tree is lit is not going for realism, but rather for the beauty of the effect. This tree had very wavy branches. And they were fun to paint, and they made for a beautiful appearance for the tree. Now I begin to bring in some cadmium orange, some vermilion, and some burnt sienna for some of the branches. And I'm finding I like how it looks, probably because those colors are complementary to the strong blues that surround the tree. I do like how complementary colors work well together in a painting. It's probably why you see three separate sets of complementary color schemes set up in this painting with the yellow and the purple with the red and the green, and then again with the blues and the orangey tones. I'm bringing some darks in to the root area to define where the roots go. And when I paint the dark next to the light white color, it makes them really stand out. I'm also bringing in the suggestion of some boulders or some rock formations into the surrounding ground line. And now I'm bringing some white ink lines up in and around the tree. I'm hoping that this will make the dark colors really pop when I lighten around them. And I've decided to use the white ink and make a very fine network of branches for the very outer branches. They were beautifully formed and very intricate. And using a fine tip pen like this worked quite well, except that again, the white ink wanted to sink into the paper. So I had to do that a number of times as well. And I am looking very closely at my reference photo at this point to see just how these little tiny branches were formed. I'm continuing to work with the white ink pen all around the tree, the tiny little outer branches, as well as outlining around the inner branches to make them stand out more. I'm also starting to paint in some tiny branches with the dark color, the Payne's gray and the indigo mixed together. 
because I want some of the branches to stand out and be accent work. The ones that move out on the other side of the tree, away from us, can be lighter. You might be wondering if I even needed that powdered graphite background that started the whole thing out with that grayish color. Thinking about it, I don't think it really shows up much in the final finished product. However, what it did do was suggest in my mind a tree form. And that's what led to me painting this and it was sitting around the studio. I was not using it anyway and I figured what do I have to lose? If I make a big mess, well at least the paper was sitting there not doing anything anyway. What I've just done here is painted over the big yellow splotch on the bottom right. I've used some very concentrated Quinn magenta and it made an orangish red type of color going on top of the yellow. The yellow just didn't look like it was serving a purpose and it was too large, whereas the red reflected some red elsewhere in the painting. And I think it worked better to lead the eye around the painting. And you can see at this point, the painting is starting to be highly formed and I'm working around the areas of the roots as well as the tree and painting what seems to need some accenting, some definition and some more emphasis. I'm also making some of the tiny outer branches with a dark color paint as opposed to all the white. And where the dark colored paint is going on to a light area, it's showing up a lot better than the white paint was showing up. using a very nice little sable brush and I'm finding that if I just use the very tip of it I can get a very thin line whereas if I press down harder it would give me a thicker line. I'm now going over some of the white acrylic lines with my ink pen to add a second or third layer and make the paint stand out even more. After doing some evaluation, I decided I needed to tie the background, the very surrounding background, into the tree a little bit more. So I'm sort of mingling some leaf forms from the outer colors into and amongst the clumps of color of the outer canopy of the tree. I'm trying to use the colors that are in the outer canopy of the tree, but in a darker concentration to bring together the background and the main object. As well as making some additional branches, as you see. but I think it is integrating the two areas better than they were. I get out my color wheel 
to see what really pops. And I see that I want to put in a little more red. So I'm adding some more concentrated cadmium orange mixed with cadmium red. Liking how that looked, adding it to some other areas as well. And then back to my white ink to do some more accent or highlighting work, I should say. To my mind, I always see magic being shown with dark, beautiful colors and then strong white against it. And that's what I'm trying to convey with this tree. I'm putting in a suggestion of a horizon with some distant trees that was in the photograph. And I'm adding just a hint of purple to show a haze along the horizon. And then highlighting some more on the rocks that sort of form the, the ground line. Going back and adding another layer of highlights to the areas in the tree that I want to be highlighted. All with the white acrylic ink. I had put my ink into a palette earlier. And I have to warn you, it's in a tall sort of thin bottle and I have knocked that bottle over a number of times so having it in the palette makes it less likely to make a mess. However since the pen needs it's well filled up it's harder to get it out of a palette than it is using the eyedropper right of ink into the well on the pen. So if you're a careful painter that's really much easier to do that way. But if you get excited and start to follow your instinct, put it in a well. Here I'm blocking off the different sides to see what needs development with less to look at. And that shows me areas where I say, oh, there just isn't enough going on here, or it's too much the same color. I need highlights or I need darks. And that's what I'm doing here on this right side. It's getting so close to being done. Just putting on finishing touches here. Final evaluation. I get my signature pen, find a likely spot, and it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video. 
I sure enjoyed painting it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And be sure to subscribe. There's links below to click on so that you can see some other things that I've been working on. My art page on Facebook, my blog about art and life, some products I use to create art, and my own art products page. If you'd like to make a purchase of a print or my art on so many different things. I hope that you'll enjoy, you enjoyed my video and I'll see you next time. Bye!